Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Theatre Pitch Podcast. This is Joe. Hey. And this is Sean. It's an audio podcast, Sean. So the vo- the vo- voice, or are you representing a demographic tonight? I am representing myself. Oh, good. and guys, as myself, I would like to say hello and welcome to the podcast. Fantastic! Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Sean. My name is Jem, and this is the Theatre Pitch Podcast, the podcast where we take a random online encyclopedia or article and. We, I was about to say we smush it, but we don't smush it yet. What we do is we take it and pitch it as how we would turn it into a theatre show. And then at the end of all three of our pitches, we then smush those pitches and try to come out with the Alta Mega, the be, 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 the big one. <laughs> I tried to get really clever with words and be like, Megatron, dear. And uh, my mouth decided to quit on that really bad joke before it had a chance to not be funny. Um, So, this week's article, Joe, do you want to introduce the audience to what you are talking about and what we are talking about? Well, this week we are talking about John Shabir. John Shabir was a British Tory political satirist who lived from 1709 to 1788. Eldest son of an attorney in Bidford, Denfordshire, Devonshire. What's Devonshire? Devonshire. See, it's where catching. His... <laughs> this is even different because you were coming up with those words. I've got them in front of me, and I still screwed it up. <laughs> Letters. Yeah, he um, was born to a family who owned land where a uh, in Devonshire where a village and a hundred were named after his family. Mm -hmm. And he went on to write political satire along with many other things. He he has an interesting life that I don't think I could do justice to in this shorter time. Just go read the article. It's a trip. Oh, it's... This is... It's rare that I actually would agree and just say, yeah, like... I don't even know if we could do a theatre show better than just saying, read this article. Just, just sit down and have a read. Um, how, like, how did you find the, the article, Sean? Um, yeah, I, I've got an idea. It, it's very loosely based. On, it's very loosely... It's... Uh, I, yeah, I've got an idea. I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it a little bit about it being right. connected. But you know what? I don't care. I feel like I've smashed it two weeks in a row. I feel like I'm allowed a dud. Okay, okay. Joe, Joe, how did you feel about pitching for this idea and this show? Well, as you know, I've thought long and hard about uh, what to do for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think after a lot of soul-searching, I'm totally convinced my idea is real and great. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I really like my idea, and I'm convinced that I actually might just do it. Because why not? Um, so who well, wants to go first? Can I go first? Sure. Sean, yes. I've, yeah. You, you can really... Is this um, one where you want to just get yours out of the way yeah. or something? Yeah. I, I, when I, I suggest I... the going first usually means that I like, I'm not confident in this whatsoever. <laughs> um, and considering last week, um, it was one of those, when I turned around and go, I don't know what I'm doing. It was like, then you're going first. I think we should keep that as the tradition, is we won't flip a coin. We'll just see who's least confident. (laughs) So, you know, you you guys, you you guys, you know, the writers, you love, you love a narrative. You love a narrative where I like visuals and concepts. Um, So keep that in mind. It's very, it's it's very, yeah. Um, The article, like you said, is great. My favourite line of the article is that, you know, you, you, you know, in Wikipedia, like articles about like people from like hundreds of years ago they're very like they're very vague and very like factual sort of like Stephen went here and then he done this and then in this time he moved to this place and then a factory opened my favorite line of this this i think i know which one it is and i think it's my favorite one too (laughs) he married young and unhappy (laughs) it's like how he's like such a baller move that Wikipedia is like we are we are so sure he was unhappy in marriage we're putting it in. Yeah. 
It's such a good. It's a bold move. <laughs> it's and it's literally and it's literally the first line in the section called family. <laughs> and, and that section's really quite small. <laughs> right. So my idea. Um. He was he was born seventeen oh nine and he lived until seventeen eighty eight. The eighteenth century, yeah? Yeah. Blackadder the third is set in the eighteenth century. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Tory political satirist. Have I said yeah. that right? Satirist. Satirist, yeah. Might yeah. edit that out. So my idea is, um, I'm going to take the sort of idea of Blackadder the Third, you know, where, you know, you've got this crazy person as the head of state and he's doing crazy stuff and, like, the commoners having to put up with it. Um, and But I'm going to use that setting, but the scenario is basically every single thing... Boris Johnson has done in like the past two years <laughs> in yeah. in that's in that concept and sort of like crank up the ridiculousness a tiny bit so it's more theatrical do you really have to crank up the you ridiculous? don't have to crank it up that cranking it up was a bit sarcastic literally do it how he <laughs> says it at parliaments it's um, P- PMQs that's my idea really is that I'm I'm being a I'm sort of doing, you know, that's what he was. You know, if he was alive today, I bet he'd be having a field day. So I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using the unfamiliar time period Mm -hmm. of the 1800s and placing these real world scenarios that we're having to put up with now in that scenario. And that's why I was thinking, oh, Blackadder the third, that's basically what I've done that on stage with you know with Boris with with Pretty Patel with Liz Trust with um the stupid one <laughs> which yeah, one am I on really about that doesn't narrow it down <laughs> you know I uh, just love and I'm uh, sure you know, you're aware of that um and then and then um obviously I won't have a um. I won't have. I don't, I don't know who to put as Blackadder because Blackadder's like, the you know in that he's he's the straight man. He's the he's the everyday man that's like that knows that these people in power are stupid. Don't know who to put. Don't know who that is. But I know that I'd want um Dominic Cummings as um Baldrick. Yeah. Okay. That would yeah. be that that that's my idea. Is 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 like the Labour Party going to feature at all? Like, it, uh, is there going to be the Keir Starmer or the Jeremy Corbyn figure, or is it just going to be a wonderful government that is in power? No, today? They're, they're they're not they're not going to be in it whatsoever because I'm doing real world scenarios and I'm yet to see the opposition do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. I'm just looking up. I'm just looking up all of the characters um, that are in Black Adam Um Three. What's his name? Ian I- Ian Blackford might pop up every now and then to call someone a liar and then be ushered out. Um, yeah, because... Oh, my gosh. I like it. I like it. I think it's tongue-in-cheek. I think it's exactly what um, John would have done um if it was if he was doing it now you know i was there thinking john (laughs) who's she on about and then i was like oh yeah john the dude the dude dude. that's my idea yeah our guy yeah i like it joe you are the person who like that would be up the alley for would you go see it I, i probably would yeah i i've seen enough kind of like things that have been taking modern day stylings or um it was a few years ago at the fringe i saw a show i can't remember its name now but it was taking like the styling of a kind of a jacobean farce but also applying it to the plot of a black exploitation film okay and 
that worked weirdly well. So I can see this being good, yeah. Yeah, cool. It's cool. a fringe show. Cheers, Joe. That's what it is. It's a fringe show. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I like your idea, Sean. Oh, we started again. We're back, Joe. We're back now. We're back. We're back in the podcast. I really like that, actually, Sean. Thank you. Um, cool. Joe. See, even when I have yeah. a shit idea, people will <laughs> still come and watch it. I mean, so, Joe's right. It's inherently, it's inherently fringe, so. Yeah. Um, it's fringe. Um, so, yeah, I was uh, saying to Sean in the gap that may or may not exist, but now has to because I've said it. Um, I was saying to Sean uh, that um, I've also taken a similar approach with this, which is I've kind of based it off one sentence that interested me, which is, in 1752, he went to Paris, where he claimed to have obtained a medical degree and yes. to have been elected member of the Academy of Sciences. Yes. This... I love the fact that it follows up on this in no way whatsoever, but just that it doesn't even exa- show any evidence that he did collect this medical degree, only that he claimed to have it. But he is referred to, from that point in the, ar- in the article onwards, as Dr. John. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I um, I but, loved that sentence. That's my favourite sentence in the whole article. But yeah, um, I will say that this was... Um, that I do think uh, he married young and unhappily does challenge it for best sentence. Yes, that, right, that, that, was, sure. that came in second but, best. Um, but so... Um, shortly after this time, he would go on to right it's it's quoted down here as um uh, one of his earliest works was a book entitled a love epistle in verse found at paris that um was um reissued shortly afterwards but um when i looked up the full title of it just gonna have to give me a moment to make sure i get this fully right but is um in fact, a love epistle in verse found at Paris in the cell of an Irish Cartesian after his death and sent to the Right Honourable R.T. Esquire by Monsieur M.R.V.X. Now, I think the fact that this is bringing in already the idea of this being a book found in prison, of what I want to do is essentially do... I like when you see things that are like biographical plays or films that don't try to tell the entire life of a person, but focus on one time. Yeah. And so I want to focus on the idea of his years in Paris. And in my mind, we can... You know what? Screw it. We've already brought up the idea of libel and slander. I don't think I can be too defamatory to a man who's been dead for over 200 years. Yeah. Um, If he wants to sue me, fine. Come at me, John's ghost. Um... So my play is about um, it's essentially kind of taking like a kind of mock Edwardian farce in styling, but it's about um, a writer who has somehow found himself claiming to be a master physician um, who moves to Paris and the way that this small borough of Paris, um, all the people of this um, borough their lives get turned on their head by the arrival of this con man claiming to be um, claiming to be a doctor. Kind of thinking, styling, like, um, have either of you two seen uh, One Man, Two Governors? A long time ago. Yeah, but, or indeed the play that it draws its roots from A Servant of Two Masters. But you know that sort of styling where it's like, High, fast-paced, like, high spirits, farcical comedy, where it's all about, like, mistaken identities and people falling in love and confusions. And at the centre of it is this character of this writer who has somehow found himself writing himself into the character of a doctor, despite the fact that he doesn't know anything about medicine. And 
bodies are piling up as he fails to treat people <laughs> and everything's going to hell um and yeah that's the idea i um, i really like that i like I, in my head the opening scene is like him going to paris and like someone someone in french saying oh we need a doctor are you a doctor and him not knowing french just goes we 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 <laughs> and just, that's how it starts. I, I just like that, like the idea that this is basically two of Hugh uh, 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 of Hugh Laurie's greatest works put together, um, where it's house, but the bodies are just piling up, and he's like, "But no," and just occasionally hits somebody with a cane. <laughs> yeah, in in reference to that, like. Um, all of his cures will be house style, where he just kind of ignores any medical professional's advice. He's not but... going to do the tests to confirm what he thinks it is. He's just yeah. going to treat it. <laughs> yeah. He's just, he has decided his way of gaining these people's confidence is to disprove everyone else and everybody while having lies. no facts to prove himself. And shouting everybody lies. But he's yeah. just going to shout. That's the only uh, phrase he can shout in French. I, um, when you were yeah. first describing yeah. it, I was like, is this Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, th- what is Mrs. Doubtfire if not also just um, a-, a comedy of errors in its own way? I like it, Joe. I'd watch it. Um, I'd watch it. Joe, watch your regional theatre. Yeah. Well, um, I haven't actually thought of one, to be honest. How, I think I've already done Liverpool Everyman Theatre. Um, I think you've got to. So, I think you've got to put it somewhere like where the Cambridge Footlights played. Yeah. I. You know. I think I'm actually going to go for this. Is going to be played at the. Um, the uh, the Hare and Hounds in Birmingham. Okay. It's normally a gig venue, but it's just the first venue I thought of. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's um, a good venue. Shout out the Hare and Hounds. Cool. Um, all right. So you guys and have both... Go on. I just wanted to say, um, can I ask, were either of you surprised that considering what we had this week and considering my T-shirt choice for the day that I didn't even mention that he was a Tory. I I, I feel like um, you've been taken over by the bots, um, but I'm going to ignore that for the bits so that they don't like yeah. come for me. Though it is, of course, important to, at this point, remind you all that um, Tories at this time were a very different party to the modern Conservatives, and that in their own way, they um, actually uh, were a more progressive party than the modern Conservatives. Well, in End a lot of, of ways. End of lecture. Great. Well done. I'm really proud of you for like not just going with the obvious and going with your instincts and going with something that sounds like it's hilarious. Uh, and that you can easily like sell and, and just by, by saying it's house, but how it would really go... <laughs> 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 and in French. And in French. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I love it. I love it. Um, okay. Well, you two, you both have pitched like, like s- s- really funny shows. Um, and Hugh Laurie. So I'm, I- I'm going to come in here and and pitch something that's not. Um, so when I was reading this article, I, I kind of my jaw. You know when you George drops and then you f- the next sentence is like even more what so your jaw drops more and eventually you're like no this just this is insane it read kind of like um you know the TV series that David Tennant did years ago before Doctor Who Casanova where it was like it felt like it was this guy it's like it was told from John's perspective when he was. 85 and decrepit and like trying to woo a young woman by like telling her of all of these escapades uh, uh or, or, or all of his mates drunk in a pub kind of thing where it's all quite glorified but i couldn't you know claim to have a medical degree i've just written that in my notes um so i was kind of like i i there are so many stories in here that are f- hilarious but they're short stories 
and they're wonderful they're wonderful little scenes and there isn't there doesn't seem to be too much of a coherent narrative um and so i was also really interested in like the things and the way that he was playing satire um and the things that he was writing about because he did write quite a lot of that kind of stuff um so i thought okay well what's the what's the kind of theater that i like a i like and enjoy and i'd want to make but also the kind of theater and performance that would suit this so i thought of kimishibai um for anybody who doesn't know what kimishibai is uh kimishibai is um a japanese i believe uh, um or potentially we're just gonna say asian because i'm i'm not having the balls to commit to the fact that i'm pretty sure it's japanese it's um an old form of storytelling where traditionally somebody would go around cycling and they'd have a box on the back of their bicycle and um they'd go to towns and they'd tell stories primarily to children but in the box they'd have various different beautifully decorated um slats that were the images that um went alongside the stories and it would kind of be kind of think about like a primitive performance version of like a graphic novel um and often kimishibai would have uh they'd be short stories and they'd have a moral uh but in more recent times they're kind of like a, a nice little performance way and a graphic way into the idea of comedy and satire and uh, i know the artist Gemma khan did an amazing um uh show the epicene butcher which was just massively satirical and massive massively just brilliant and beautiful and funny so my my my, my show is um it's a series of kimishibai it's in the style of kimishibai right we have a box we have the the slats with the beautiful artwork and it's the stories not only from his life but also from his works so it's little skits basically but they are they are told through storytelling and animated storytelling um is it like um this is this is not very arty at all but like um you know the jack black ghost go goosebumps film where like the books he writes have like come into life is it a little bit like that I haven't seen it, but I don't think so from that description. Oh, I think it's right. it's just a collection of short stories, but the through line of all of these stories, because usually they're, they, they can be quite um, disjointed or separated. They're just different stories. But I want the through line to be this man. And I was trying to think, you know, part of me is considering you've like, you've got the storyteller with the box and then you've got the drunken John there and he's the one who tells the story of his life whilst this whilst this um storyteller is trying to tell the satire or the other way around i couldn't quite figure out which to do so you've got this narrative uh, that is a dynamic character narr like relationship between these two characters but also they've got their um ideas and i think that i really if i was to do this show i would make sure that it was adapted to reflect whatever we wanted because his life was so a his life was so um full and rich and he was a very prolific writer so there are there, there are so many stories and like it's one of those oh he's gone to prison and then he comes out and he's a doctor and then he's gone to this place and he's done that and he's gone to this place and like it's quite wild and I think there are lots of stories in there where you could sit there and go okay well currently in the the zeitgeist we're discussing themes of this there is a John story um and so I wanted to kind of create this idea of a, a load of uh, of short stories that have your through line of John they can be played wherever um and yeah it's a two-handed commission by of John's stories by the way, I did just want to say first thing, Jem, I looked it up for you and you don't want to worry, you can confidently say Kamishibai is Japanese. Brilliant, because I know that I know that uh, throughout China they've got a very similar concept, but it is called something else and I and I panicked for a second. So thank yeah. you, Joe. Well it, it's um it's because the whole thing originates from the eighth century Buddhist temples where they would often use pictorial scrolls to 
display the stories that they were telling. Mm. And but the actual art of Kamishibai really becomes popular around kind of nineteen thirties Tokyo and beyond. Yeah, and they they would often carry sweets with them as well. So then that like the kids would pay the tuppence for a story and a sweet kind of thing. Not a tuppence, mm. but a Japanese it's amazing version. that Joe just knows this stuff off the top of his head, isn't um, it? Yeah, I already <laughs> said I was on the online encyclopedia, Sean. <laughs> Um, I was there already. All I had to do was use the search engine portion of it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my pitch. Um, so we've had Sean's Blackadder the Third, but with Boris Johnson. Joe's um, Mock Edwardian farce of uh, uh, that that's basically House meets Blackadder, and it's fantastic. And then my Kabishi by um, of John's stories. So now we're gonna cut to the smush. <laughs> so um i i feel like the the last two weeks admittedly gem week one we both had smush ideas last yeah. week i presented a smush so i'm just interested to know sean do you have a smush thought? You know, I don't like this bit. <laughs> I really don't like this Look, bit. Look, <laughs> no is an acceptable answer here. I just didn't want to feel like I was, you know, kind of taking up your airtime. No, yeah. no, I just don't. I just, I, I just don't like this bit. I always feel like, I always feel like, oh, you're ruining this. <laughs> yeah. For what, by forcing it to be yeah, more than one bit, thing? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I like... Like yeah. last week, last week I was all right with it because it was like I needed a I needed a narrative for my show anyway. So you were like, just have that. This week though, they're so they're so different that yeah. I wouldn't want. I don't want to touch yours because I quite I really I, I really would like to watch that show of like yeah. just a dude pretending to be a doctor in France. <laughs> in the seventeen <laughs> and the backdrop and the backdrop I, is just I dead bodies like just the rising. Idea that... That slowly throughout the play as well, as more and more characters go to visit him, um, that he like every time they do, because um, earlier on this it also states that one of his earlier publishings was a new analysis of the Bristol waters together with the cause of diabetes and hectic and their cure as it results from those waters. It could be a musical so, like Sweeney Todd. Yeah, I. <laughs> In my head, basically what happens is, like, wasn't it tapeworms that House kept saying everyone had tapeworms? Lupus. Um, Lupus, sorry. Don't know why I thought it was tapeworm. But I think it's basically, this guy, basically, anytime someone comes to visit him, he diagnoses them with diabetes and then somehow still manages to kill them. Yeah. Um, so it's just, be, as the play goes on, more and more of the rep cast are just piled up, hidden behind the furniture. I, I, I genuinely like the idea that it's like, uh, you've got the gauze at the back of the <laughs> stage and it's backlit and it's these bodies piling up. But what I like more about that is that some production assistant has had to go place an order for a hundred like mannequins, or not even mannequins, <laughs> like a hundred CPR dolls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and justify oh can i have like 300 i'll okay i'll take i'll take just 100 yeah, we'll make yeah but i feel dollars. like if you're putting that much of an order in i feel like if you go that what's the number where that's creepy because i feel like if you're ordering <laughs> 300 of something then there's there, there's a clear purpose and if you're ordering one of those there's a clear purpose there's a number in between there where it is dodgy I, I feel like it's if you're going off like fives and tens. So it's like if you order 150 Seven. mannequins, that's weird. That's fine. If you're ordering 160 mannequins, that's a little weird. If you're ordering 162 Two. mannequins precisely, I was thinking yeah. that's when it gets strange. See, I was thinking if you're ordering like 37, it's like. Why 37? <laughs> Why haven't you just rounded up yeah. to 40? I, I think you can also... <laughs> yeah, you... When, it's, when it's a precise number, yeah. that's when it's weird. Yeah. I, I, you can also make it weird by being like, I'm not ordering it at, at like at a company email. It's at hotmail.co.uk. <laughs> okay. oh, oh no, I'd set up a gorilla mail yeah. just to order these mannequins. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness and then you've also got to sit there and like have the discussion quite literally as a director of like when these bodies like f like flop up like 
flop behind the gauze? Do they flop? Do they splat? Like, what kind of... What what rigidity do we want these bodies to be at? And also, yeah. does the production assistant then, when they're ordering the bodies, do, do they have to confirm if the bodies will splat or rattle to give you that kind of effect that you're after? Okay, so with this in mind, um, because I think it would be too easy for us to say all three of our ideas are good, let's let all three of them exist. That would be the coward's way out for this. I'm going to present something... And if you like the coward's way out, why don't you follow us at Linktree? (laughs) 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 No, okay, so... I have... One of my biggest struggles over the last couple of years has been that I fundamentally, I kind of disagree with the idea of art about coronavirus. Yes, I agree. Because I'm not ready yet to have nostalgia for the times I'm living in, and especially not for the last few years. Yeah. But I kind of want to make this that. Really? Of I think we find a way to take the spirit of this kind of like <laughs> no, dark medical fast have, of mine. You can't have it's 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 Boris Johnson piling up the bodies. <laughs> oh, it's Boris Johnson piling up the bodies. <laughs> oh my gosh! And the commission buyer, all of the stories of the times where people had to say goodbye whilst the, Boris Johnson was yep. partying. <laughs> oh, you've all got there already. <laughs> This is my way of trying to whimsically display the near criminal levels of neglect that this government has portrayed. I mean... <laughs> Through a combination of Kamishi by Edwardian farce. Um... <laughs> there you go. We've got farce and... Um... Like gentrification. Oh, and of I a... can just imagine it. Every time he comes back from like the the backdrop, he just comes out and... Scruffs up his hair, like, and he just like, hello. <laughs> um, I I have a way that isn't gonna like make us hurl, but I don't think it's better. <laughs> um, so it's it's it... it might not be better, but it might allow you to sleep at night. So, no, I think. Oh no, I oh, know. I think my brain's just gone. That's that's better because you're genuinely angry and you have not yet expressed it, and it's just like leaking your idea into mine. Um, because I was like, oh yeah, short stories. Um, but and like in the in the in the style of Black Adder and like this idea of this Mark Edwardian farce, and they're about Boris Johnson, which is basically what you've just said, but like the PC version of giving. That's what you put in the brochure to get an audience, but then the truth of the matter is what you've said, Joe. You know what I think? Go on. Like, over £700,000 billion, we should write this episode off. No. (laughs) Oh, gosh. And to follow us on... (laughs) And if if you head over to Linktree... Oh, forward slash OFITD. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this YouTube channel. I feel like Sean, like, suddenly in the close is going to leave anybody, including Joe and I, who's listening, going like, what the hell's happening? You're, like, embodying how we've experienced the last two years. Well done. Uh, Joe, yeah. look up the article that we're going to do for the next episode. Sean, get back to your yes. spiel. Um, yeah, easiest place to go, Linktree. It's in the description, you know, please share, you know, please like, you know, yeah. whatever you're listening in on, whatever you're doing, you know, it helps the numbers, apparently. That's why it's so low. Okay, Yay. and if you <laughs> want to follow me on Instagram, it's still Shawnee B. Hey, Gemma, where can people follow you on the social media? I'm going to tell them in a second, but I'm going to say, Sean, you've got to have a little bit more Boris Johnson style confidence. Okay, sorry, in, sorry. In in this podcast. Hey, Come on. Hey, there you guys. Go. Hey, guys. <laughs> For anyone listening rather than watch watching. The sh- watch the podcast, <laughs> listen to the podcast, like, share, and subscribe. Whiff, waff, woo. Um, <laughs> um, what's, I, need, I need some slogans. Get podcasts done.
Um, uh, um, what other ones has he got? Build theatre pitch back. <laughs> build theatre pitch back better. <laughs> um. So I, I, I yeah yeah let 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 let's just all clap for our podcast, podcast level up leveling up the podcast. That's a new one, isn't it? <laughs> we. We give three hundred and fifty million a year to the EU. Couldn't we give that money to Theatre Pitch? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, and if you do want to give that kind of money to Theatre Pitch, then go to we our link tree, that. or go. You can find me on Instagram at um, o f i t d underscore gem with a J, so J E M. Um, Joe. And if you want to find me online, you can do so at not Joe Ronchka. That's N O T J O E R A C Z K A. You can find me there on Twitter and Instagram. I wouldn't recommend following me on Instagram, but hey, come and chat to me on uh, uh, Twitter, and we can talk about our favourite failings of the current government. <laughs> yep. Um, but you know what's not going to be a failing? next week's episode because we've got a doozy do you want to know what it is i'm scared what is it i don't what if we say no what if like (laughs) (laughs) you're just like no i don't want to know um that case i'd tell you at the beginning of next week's episode and you'd both be as prepared as me (laughs) improv off (laughs) all right so next week we are talking about chikil who what? Chakil, also known as Oblivnoi, is an uninhabited island off the Bay of Baku in Azerbaijan. The island forms part of the Baku archipelago, which consists of the following islands. Boyuk, Jira, Dash Jira, Kum Island, or Peshani, Zenbil, Sangi Mugan, Chakil, Karasu, Karajira, Gil, Ignat Dash, and a few smaller ones. I've occasionally found myself, like, accidentally stepping into, like, Hebrew classes and different language classes and, like, Italian classes and stuff. And I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. I've I've just had flashbacks. Thank you. You know what, Gemma? I know where Baku is. I know. Yeah, it's off the coast of Azerbaijan. Yeah. It's where they do the racing. (laughs) It's got got this really horrible left-hand corner called the castle. It's really tight. It's horrible. Okay. Is, is this another call back to your days on Sega Rally? No. Say, no, this is Formula One. This is F1. Okay. This is Formula One. It's a yeah. really horrible corner. It's really... Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody and anybody who has been listening or watching. I hope you've enjoyed all of the uh, love for Hugh Laurie this episode. And black adder and farce, and uh, uh, dipping our toes into Japanese ancient storytelling techniques. Um, so, gosh, one day we're going to actually have to pitch to how we end this podcast. Yeah, and one day we might actually be really professional at this point. Yeah. <laughs>